waiting for their colossal collision. We all know the story of how these two giants met each other. Movie buffs from across the globe know how Godzilla and King Kong got started. But what we don't know is how the idea of this movie all began. It began in the early 1960s, where Willis O'Brien had just finished working on the special effects for Irwin Allen's 1960 fiasco, The Lost World. He then had a burning desire to bring the legendary ape back to the big screen in a whole new adventure. The result was an idea called King Kong vs. Frankenstein, where the eighth wonder of the world fights a giant monster created from different animal parts. The script he wrote contains a climactic battle where the monsters fight each other and destroy San Francisco. Also, he wanted to create the special effects like the original 1933 classic where it contains stop motion. O'Brien was looking for producers who wanted to accept his idea. He ran into producer John Beck, who teamed up with Obi, as he is known in the movie world, and science fiction movie writer George Yates who wrote such science fiction classics as The Amazing Colossal Man, Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, and Them. Yates made some changes to his script, such as changing the title to King Kong vs. Prometheus. Later, John Beck took his script to another studio. This one was not American and had a project of monstrous proportions. In Japan, there was a studio called Toho Company Limited. This studio was known for making films involving Japan's greatest movie monster, Godzilla. Toho was planning to let Godzilla fight another monster, a Frankenstein monster of their own. This was Frankenstein vs. Godzilla. Tomiyuki Tanaka, who was the head of Toho, had a passion to make a Frankenstein project. When John Beck's script was given to Tanaka, he was impressed. Tanaka showed the script to others, and this sparked the idea that would blow the minds of moviegoers and fans for years to come. Dropping their jumbo-sized Frank for the giant ape, they decided to create what would become King Kong vs. Godzilla. The film was to be shot in Sri Lanka for the Faroe Island scenes, but due to budget problems, they decided to shoot on their own local island, Oshima. Eiji Tsuburaya, who is known for doing the special effects for various Godzilla films of the 50s and 60s, was thinking of using stop-motion animation for the monsters, but he changed his mind and decided to use men in rubber suits and use stop-motion for brief scenes. He also gave the monsters a new look. Kong looked like a big, fat, diseased orangutan, while Godzilla looked like a bulky alligator with long arms. For the giant octopus scenes, he used four of these animals. To make them move, hot air was blown at them. After the octopus scenes were shot, three were released back to the sea, while one was dinner for Mr. Tsuburaya. When the movie was reported by the magazine Variety, Willis O'Brien, who was working on It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, heard about it and died of broken heart. When the film was released on August 11, 1962, it was the highest grossing Godzilla film in the franchise, with a whopping 11.2 million yen. This was the first film to be shot in color for both Godzilla and King Kong. It was the movie everybody was talking about. A long time ago, I remember seeing it when I was young, and also it was on demand last week, and I caught most of it then. What did you think about this movie? Well, I found it very interesting, and you can see that there are two important parts, the Japanese part with Godzilla, and their great monster, and King Kong, which is the American great monster. And to see them as two film icons joined together, kind of unites the United States and Japan. This was after the Cold War, so, and it was also after the atomic bomb. 
So Godzilla being uh, kind of atomic and had radiation power and King Kong with just strength but also intelligence. Godzilla maybe not so much intelligence uh, with a lot of brute force. Godzilla has a brain about this size. He is sheer brute force. While Kong is a thinking animal. His brain is considerably larger. About ten times the size of this gorilla's skull. Being instinctive rivals, there is no doubt that they will attempt to destroy one another. So I was very happy to see that King Kong uh, won out. With the film being a box office success, a sequel was said to be planned immediately. It was under the title Continuation, King Kong vs. Godzilla, written by Shinichi Sekizawa, who also wrote the previous film. However, it never lived to see the light of day, due to other projects getting in the way. So they ended up re-releasing the film in 1970 and 1977. No matter who is more powerful, who wins or loses, King Kong vs. Godzilla will remain a great movie for years to come.